Kadosh. In the name of Jesus. Judges chapter 13. Judges 13. Hallelujah. Glory to God. One of the things we got to understand that nowadays, amen, the enemy is really trying his best to dispose us, to hinder us, to delay us. But you must understand that when the when you want to receive something from God, there are times the best time and the best season to receive something special from God is when you go into a place of consecration. Somebody say consecration. There are demonic powers, there are demonic entities, there are demonic strongholds that the enemy will put in place. Hallelujah. To make sure that you don't ascend in the realms of prayer. Hallelujah. But you must remember, you must remember that once you are grounded in him, every fountain of hell will lose its hold in your life. Amen. When we begin to study something, hallelujah, the Bible says that Daniel began to say, he made up his in his heart that he will not eat anything that is unclean. Hallelujah. When you begin to eat something that is unclean, it can dispose you, it can dispose you, it can hinder you, and it can deny you from your inheritance. Hallelujah. Many people have been de denied. Many people have been hindered. Many people have been cut short from the very thing of purity, for the thing of holiness, for the thing of cleansing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mum brother Rebe via pass, Sakatundo Bohanda Labado. Zelebendeli via para Kadia Karadosh. I am praying and I releasing the blood of Jesus upon this prayer line. I decree everyone hearing the sound of my voice as we get into the world that you will not only open our understanding, open our ear gate to hear and to receive from you. Spirit of God, I pray that you give us enlightenment, divine enlightenment. Open your word and open your message to us. Speak to our hearts. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, from the top of our head to the soles of our feet, let the word of God be strong, powerful, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, 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 glory. Oh, Rabba, 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Zedede Shigada Pradosh. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. Ante de de Gado, Shanda Baharadia. Oh, Rabba Rabba Gosende Behedia. Hallelujah, Genaman Rodokush. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Now, so when we study this book, I mean, hallelujah, let's quickly open our Bible to that George's 13. Let's flow quickly. Let's flow quickly. Hallelujah. And the children of God, Israel, did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines for 40 years. So it's been a while. The people were in bondage. Hallelujah. And there was a certain man in Zorah. God is not trying to, to, to reveal to us the main reasons. Hallelujah. Why he brings people into bondage. Amen. Hallelujah. He wants to reveal to us the main reason why people are brought into bondage. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mom brother Rabba Baka Shanda Bahaya. Zelebele baby Abrando Rebebe Abaradi. Zum brother Rebebe Berebe Abaradi Aradosh. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Huh. The devil is a liar. Whatever the enemy has planted in your life will be destroyed, will root it out by the blood of Jesus. Israel begin to do evil. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Sorry for that interruption. Amen. And the Israel began to do evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines. When God literally carries the people and put them in the hand of the enemy, the Lord will also look for a deliverer to rescue them. The reason is not because God, that scripture needs to be corrected. Hallelujah. We love King James because King James, I think, made over close to 200 mistakes. He's the only one that has the limited mistakes in the Bible. Many of the different Bible translations, I mean, have, have so much, so much mistakes. 
Amen. So much true mistakes or true tra translation mistakes. Hallelujah. And so King James is the only one that has limited mistakes. That's why we use King James all the time. Hallelujah. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them in the hand of the Philistines. 40 years for 40 years amen hallelujah the the i mean the the, the children of israel did evil in the sight of the lord hallelujah i don't know who is listen to me when your family is involved in evil people have been doing evil left and right hallelujah god will always look and search for somebody we we'll always look for somebody who is positioned for the lord how can you be positioned how can you how can the lord look at the bible says the eyes of the lord is look going to and fro through the earth and is looking for who i mean his, his, his eyes upon those who are what who are pure who have a pure heart hallelujah he's searching for those who are really hungry for him he's searching for those who have his own interest hallelujah if god is to god is looking for how to interrupt our day how to move on the earth because he has given power to the man the uh, dominion to, to man amen hallelujah so when you give man the dominion and you give them the keys to their house you don't just buzz into their house god is a humble god very humble hallelujah so every time before he comes on the earth he has to look for man's permission, man to invite him, amen, man to long after him, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah. So, this is what has been happening to man, hallelujah. So, we must understand, somebody say understand. Thank you, Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord Jesus, glory to God, hallelujah. So, when we begin to understand what is really going on in the realm of the spirit, many of you have been going through some situations bondages attacks god is always looking for a prophet or a deliverer into your family to send into your life glory to god praise god what am i receiving a phone call amen yeah yes is it cut off oh oh she da bara sande de be kapa somebody shout hallelujah Somebody shout hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I bless your name, Jesus. Sorry if there was so much distractions. Hallelujah. And I'm so sorry for that. But it, it is well taken care of. Well taken care of. Well taken care of. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. So when we look at something, we begin to understand that how do we be used by the Lord? How can God take hold of us? You know, before the devil can use you, he has to look for an open door. If the devil, before the devil can use you, he introduces what they call pleasure. And when the enemy begins to get pleasure over you, he introduces something that causes you. The Bible says, resist the devil. Flee from every appearance of evil. Why? Because to entertain evil is to invite the, the devil. For every little evil that is in your life, for every little pollution, amen, gives the devil authority over your life. Amen? Hallelujah. For every little, little involvement you give to the devil, if you want to be free from the tormenting spirit and you allow your mind, you give access to the devil, you open your mind to the devil, something happens to you when you open your mind to the devil the devil will come after you and begin to oppress your mind affliction did not start it starts today amen so every time the devil wants to torment you every time the devil wants to come after you he releases something that opens the door for him it can be pollution pollution can come as a defilement and when it comes and enters into your temple this pollution begins to glorify the flesh, self. It brings, it begins to drive away the presence of God, and that is why, that is why, you know, people don't understand. Hallelujah! People don't understand that every time you go before, um, you, 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 you have your dinner, Hallelujah, and you don't wash your dishes, you leave it around to get stuck for one day, two days, three days. What will happen? What will happen? So when you leave your stuff for two days or three days, it begins to attract flies. It begins to attract all kinds of insects. Amen. Hallelujah. And you see the your, your house metamorphosis will start taking place. All kinds of nonsense. And you don't want that to happen into your life. Somebody say hallelujah. So this is what has affected a lot of believers. Amen. A lot of believers. So 
please get ready for what God is about to do in this season. Yeah, um, for you to receive and to hear from God, you need to be positioned by the Lord. You need to position yourself to receive from God. So therefore, we're going to be looking at some certain scriptures. And you see, in this, uh, uh, in the case of um, George chapter 13, something was very unique. So God was looking for a woman or a man who he could use, who could be a blessing to this generation, who could be an answer to the sol and a solution to these people's problems. A lot of people have been afflicted. A lot of people were in bondage. But something was going on. Hallelujah. Something was going on. And so God was looking for who would be a vessel that can be used to bring deliverance over the life of these people. I believe that in this season, my God, will, you will be the answer to your people in the name of Jesus Christ. And there was a certain verse too. And there was a certain man from Zorah, the family of Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and bare not. I don't know why God, hallelujah, I don't know why God always used every barren woman. It means, the word barrenness means it's, it's unfruitful definitely. But it just means that it's not, you are not permitted to have any kind of child. Wait a second. Have you been experiencing a level of barrenness? It means that if you're just starting life you just get a child just like that. You didn't really not you did not involve no energy or prayer. It means that you may not have something special. But when God wants to give you something very unique and very special, sometimes He can there's a level, there's a something they call a barrier. There's something that God sometimes will permit or allow. And if you are very special or you have, you are holy or you are consecrated, many times the devil fears that the seed you're going to give battle will be a great seed. And so therefore the devil will introduce barrenness or fruitfulness. Sometimes God allows it because with that barrenness, it makes you to long after him to pray more. It makes you to take your seed very serious. It makes you to come to God and say, Lord, make use of this seed it makes you to bargain with god every time god wants to do something it's a strategist he will come and close your womb but that will be wickedness he just allows the enemy to do that and he will open your eyes to let you know it's not him it's the enemy and now just like he did in jerusalem i will pour upon the house of david the spirit of grace and supplication he pours upon you that spirit of supplication and it brings you to that place of prayer and holiness positions you to receive something from God. So what am I trying to say to you? Some of you have been going through some crazy seasons in your life. You have been going through some situations in your life. Unexplainable setbacks, unexplainable delays. It's not because the enemy is advancing towards you. It's because the enemy, you might compare yourself with others. Others can be mocking you because they are, their mind, they, they, they think on earthly things. But if you're really for the Lord and you're passionate for the Lord, sometimes I've seen that sometimes the enemy, the Lord might permit some setbacks just for you to dedicate many of the things he's committed into your hands. Because if he allows the nation at the early time of ignorance, there might be pollution. If you understand, when God when Adam and Eve came together and knew themselves, they created Eve, uh, Cain. That Cain was a seed, but was influenced by the forbidden fruit. The forbidden fruit entered into them and polluted the right seed. And so that child began to commit murder. That child began to influence evil against Abel. Because if you remember, after that child, after the, 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 the uh, Cain came forth, the Bible says, Adam began to say, Lord, thank you. God has given me a son. Now, if you remember now, from that statement, you can tell that Adam began to reconcile with God. Adam began to remember God in prayer. And from that time of prayer, Abel came forth. And Abel came forth, it was a genuine seed. You see, when the seed, when the enemy 
sees that you have a great leader or you have a great man or you're a great woman and you are carrying something precious in you, he will make sure you are tempted before you give birth to your seed. If God has given you the tree of life, eat of this tree of life, the devil will make sure before you eat of the tree of life, you must pollute yourself. When you have great destiny that lives inside of you. Somebody say amen. When there's a great destiny that lives inside of you, hallelujah, you want to, you want to, you want to make sure you eat of the tree of life before, God forbid, any form of pollution enters you. Now we see something that is happening here. Same thing that happened. The angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto the woman, he says, Behold now, thou art barren. He said what? Thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Because of this barrenness, this woman began to pray. Hannah began to pray because she was barren. The Bible says, Leah, Jacob's wife, was greatly despised because she could not conceive, because she was despised, and God now opened her womb. But just by mercy. Now, let's, let's go further. And therefore, beware, I pray thee, drink not wine, nor strong drink, or eat anything unclean. I pray thee, drink not wine, strong drink, nor eat anything unclean. Let's pause there. Some people say, this is Old Testament. Let's drink wine, it's fun. Let's do this, it is glorious. Let's do that, let's do this, let's enjoy. <laughs> Hallelujah. You want to be very, 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 very careful. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord Jesus. He said, Lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son. No razor shall come upon thee. For the child that thou shalt be a Nazarite unto God from the womb, he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hands of the Philistines. And the woman came on and told the husband, and saying, A man, I'm reading verse 6, A man of God came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel. Hallelujah. Of God. Very terrible. Hallelujah. He said, a man of God. He didn't say an angel. But I asked him not whence he was, neither told he me his name. He said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, nor drink wine or strong drink. Okay, now. Then Manoah entreated of the Lord and said, O Lord my God, let the man of God, which thou didst send, come again unto me. Teach us what we shall do unto the child that shall be born. How I many of you understand that these were prophets? They were in, uh, in, inquiring from the Lord. How shall we treat the seed that is coming forth? You must position yourself in this season. You must consecrate yourself in this season. As you enter into the, uh, the, 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 the forthcoming year, 2018, the only reason God will work with you is if you inquire your key, your successful keys in accessing that, um, that year. If you don't pray, if you don't set time aside, to hear from the Lord, to give you strength for 2018. 2018 might swallow your salvation. I don't want you to enter 2018 and you met somebody and you lost your whole fire, your whole anointing, your whole power. Somebody say, God forbid. 2018 is a must that you must walk with God. That every trap that the enemy is setting for your life, you will not fall into that trap. Hallelujah. It was very serious because this woman had a serious seed. Verse 9, And God hearkened to the voice of Manoah, and the angel of God came again unto the woman, as she sat in the field. But Manoah, her husband, was not with her. And the woman made haste, and ran, and showed her husband, and said unto him, Behold, the man had appeared to me that came unto me the other day. Manoah arose and went after his wife and came to the man, said unto him, Are thou the man that speakest unto the woman? He said, I am. Manoah said, Now let thy words come to pass. How shall we order the child 
and how shall we do this to, unto him? And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Of all that I said unto the woman, let her be well. The word be well means let her be very careful. She may not eat of anything that cometh from the of the vine, neither let her drink wine, strong drink, or eat anything unclean. That all that I commanded, let her observe. Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, I pray thee, let us detain thee. Hallelujah. They kept calling this man the man of God because it seemed ordinary. I don't know why they won't say it's an angel. The man will just show up and start prophesying. Hallelujah. Just come like a next door neighbor. When you have a seed, when you have been praying to God for an answer, it's not, you might stand before your prophet when you have not prayed. Prophet might look at you and he might prophesy what you already know. But when you're really asking God to God to do something and you're looking to the right to the left, everybody are fruitful. You're not, you're barren. It seems like you're in barren land. It's because something God wants to do something great with you. If in the midst of all this, you have not been distracted, in the midst of all this, you've kept your salvation, in the midst of all this, you've not fallen. Hallelujah. In the midst of all this, you've not fallen. Amen. Hallelujah. It means that God is preparing something great with you. What we are seeing here, when God begins to say, let her drink, let her not drink wine or strong drink or eat anything or clean. It means that those three things can influence your seed. Those three things can be used by the devil to influence your seed. Those three, three things can weaken divinity in your seed. Those three things can kill your consecration. How many things do we eat unclean? How many things do we taste in our lives? In this season, please prepare yourself. Daniel made up in his mind, I will not touch anything unclean. One single unclean person that enters into your life can detain your destiny for life. Many of us who have suffered delays in our life can tell you the true story. Based of many of our setbacks and delays are because of the, of the wrong people that come into our lives. People spread all kinds of words. And they know the lifestyle they've lived. Are you hearing me? But they are the one that can open your mouth and start talking. Because the lifestyle of holiness is not there. Praise God. You must live a lifestyle of holiness and purity. It might be delay, delay. You may not get the answers today. You may not get the answers tomorrow. But surely God will hear your prayers. Now, when Samson came forth, this man did not have a mobile. This man was alone. This man began to do unusual, unusual, unusual wonders. This man was so bold because something has arrived. The mother began to see literally the prophetic word come to pass. When something came, he wasn't known as a prophet. He was known as one kind of warrior, one kind of crazy guy. He wasn't speaking. He had just had an ability, an unusual ability. This guy could take down Nephilims. There was a supernatural strength on him because he was an original seed of consecration just to deliver Israel out of the Philistines' hands. I'm prophesying to somebody here. How many of you want to be the Joseph in your family? How many of you, if you want to be, be the Joseph in your family, prepare for the war that Joseph went through. Prepare for the isolation. Prepare for the rejection. Prepare for the setbacks. Prepare for the betrayals. Prepare for the evil words. Prepare for the deep wells of death. You will go through all this. People you trust in, people you believe in, can betray you. But you still have to walk in love. 
the word prison for Joseph, where he was thrown to, was for Joseph to get back his heart together. Because Joseph had so much bitterness based on what happened. He began to reflect of what the brothers did to him. Hallelujah. And so somehow, God wanted him to let go, forgive, and come to a place of maturity. But after he was now in the prison, the Bible says, he, he, for God was with him, he obtained favor with the wardens. To obtain favor means he began to pray, he began to seek the face of God. He began to call upon the Lord. Until, the Bible says, until his word came. He had prophetic words. He had a dream. He has been dreaming, but he sat on it. Positioned himself. Began to fast. And just like Daniel began to fast, he, God connected him by favor. Hallelujah. If you want something unusually done in your generation, I'm not talking to everybody. I'm just talking to some unique people who really, really want to receive something precious from God. It's not by just praying and praying. It's not by somebody offering me today, and eh, tomorrow, I don't pick his call. You are doing yourself in harm. Because the prayers you prayed two days ago, three days ago, angels are already coming to your house. If Daniel would have entertained of forgiveness, offenses, those angels would have gone back to heaven. Some of us have missed so much blessings because of the devil who just... Do you know that if there was phone calls, if there was if phone was available, cell phones were available, the enemy would have distracted Daniel from fulfilling that fast. Daniel, the angels were waiting for Daniel, were praying that God will continue, will continue to pray for Daniel to fulfill that fast, 21 days, that he should not be distracted. But the priest of Pasha was wrestling with him. There were other angels under the command of the Prince of Persia. I'm sure some of them were giving command. Let Shadrach, Meshach disturb Daniel. Let them go disturb Daniel. Make sure they offend Daniel. Make sure they call Daniel and get him offended. And so when we have really prayed and we are expecting answers, the devil may allow somebody or a child or somebody to get us offended. And if you lose focus and entertain that unforgiveness or you have the memory of the offense in your heart for days, it can deny your answers that you're waiting for. Hallelujah. I want you to prepare yourself because this year, as this year is coming to an end, it close. You must get yourself ready. We write goals. We write goals on what we want to accomplish 2018. I want to accomplish 2000 and the next year. What goal do you have with the Lord? What are you asking God to do in your life? You have been asking God, Lord, I want to move into a house. Lord, I want to move into a house. This house you are making for me, I want to move in there. Why am I being denied every day, every day, every day? Have you bargained with God? Have you asked the Lord, I want this house to be a fellowship center? I want to raise men of God here? Have you ever asked God, have you made a deal with what you want from the Lord? One of the greatest requests I've seen in my life, and I've always seen rapid answers, is making a vow with God. Making a vow with God. If God is about to give you a baby, a baby can be a ministry, can be a house, can be a project. Do you use that vow to abuse his own people? Are you hearing me today? When God wants to bless you and you say, Lord, give me, I need some money. And God will ask you, why do you need the money? I say, Lord, if I give, if I get this money, I want to help the poor. I want to help the fatherless. And you're not saying it because it's what everybody does. But there is a burning passion within your heart. There is a burning hunger and desire to meet this vision. Now that is a baby. When your passion supersedes and begins to cry out through you in your tears, you make a deal with God. 
Lord, if you give me this child, oh God, if you give me this money, I make a vow. I will not fail you. If you give me this business, this office, I will support the kingdom. And when the kingdom comes, it's not to support the kingdom you are using to insult pastors. Oh boy. The Bible says, Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. People have made a lot of mistakes and blunder in this area. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's funny that when we make vows, I've made vows before to the Lord. When we make vows, the enemy will, uh, because we tell our friends or people the vow and the covenant, make sure that every time you make a covenant or a vow with God, keep it secret. Because you want me to open your mouth, the devil will devise every way to destroy or annul that vow. The Bible says that Delilah was looking for the strength, the secret, the strength to this guy, to Samson. Samson, the Bible says that the mother sat Samson down and said, Son, the angel said, Don't drink any strong drink. Son, don't touch anything or cling. Hallelujah. Son, don't do this, don't do this. You know what you know what Saul did? You know what you know what the Samson did? Hallelujah. In the midst of all that. One day Samson parted. He said he needed a wife. Give me a wife, Father. And the father says, You don't need to get a wife in this area. These are your enemies. Samson said, the wife. He said, She pleased me. Samson went ahead and got the wife. The next time Samson began to party. Getting drunk. Next time he found a prostitute. Well, the amazing thing is that when he was heading there, going down to the Philistines, the Bible says he met a lion. He did not come after his parents, came after him. He told the lion, as he was returning back, he saw a honey in the lion. You know, one of the things that amazes me in that revelation is that the devil was just setting trap for uh, Samson. Number one, he broke the promise by drinking alcohol. God, he showed mercy. Sometimes the fan can be blowing in the house. When you switch off the fan, the fan can still be moving. But it is disconnected. In a matter of time, the fan will stop. So Samson had broken the first covenant. Samson broke the first covenant. Broke the second covenant. He drank, began to drink alcohol. He was a seed consecrated. He began to lose his consecration by drinking. The power of God was still on him. God was still using him. Then, what else? What happened to him next? He went ahead. And the Bible says when he was returning back, this is where I'm going to. Very, very funny. As he was returning back, something happened. He killed a lion. And you know when he was coming back? What happened? The Bible says he found honey in the lion. Then took the honey and went to go meet his parents and served the mother and the father honey. Was that a blessing? Let me open it for everybody to ask me. I want to ask everybody on the prayer line. Hallelujah. Was that a blessing, everybody? Those on Periscope, tell me. Hallelujah. Was that a blessing or a curse? Was it a blessing or a curse? Huh? A blessing. A blessing. Any other person? What is only doing in the carcass of the lion? Huh? I don't understand you looking of the body. Good question. Good question. I like that. Now, let's go back again. Let's, you will get the answer now. Let's go back again. Let's read that scripture again. Hallelujah. Mm. 
Let's read that scripture again. Please let me know. Glory to God. Somebody say glory. 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 Now, look at that scripture again. Verse 4. Read it again for me. Somebody. Read verse 4 again. If you read it, read it, read it like a warrior. Read it again. Has, is somebody bold enough to... Okay, let me just read what, it. What, what is, Judges 13, verse 4. Now, therefore, now, therefore be beware. I pray thee, and drink not. Drink not wine, nor drink, nor strong drink. And eat not any unclean thing. You remember, you see the last word there? Eat what? Okay. Is that good or bad? What what's Samson eat? Is what Samson tasted, was that good or bad? Bad. Okay. So now God said, Don't eat anything or claim. Now Samson must have somehow the devil must have heard the conversation between Samson and the mother. Are you hearing me? First, this is the revelation here. Why will the lion come out from the Philistines? Why you are heading to the Philistines area and he encounter the lion? That's number one. Why will a honey be found in a carcass? Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So we begin to understand. Sorry for breaking in everybody. Listen to me. Why he was going down to the enemy's camp. A lion met him. Hallelujah. A lion met him. Meaning, when you are going to the wrong place, your enemies will always confront you. When Jonah was headed to the wrong place and a big fish swallowed him. Thank God that God showed mercy on this guy. If, if he had gotten killed, something, there would be no testimony there. But God wanted him to learn from his mistakes by taking him down to that same place. So God began to speak to me. Every time you're in the wrong place, you're always vulnerable to attacks. When you're in the wrong place, I did not plan to you. You will not be protected from all kinds of attacks, rumors, accusations. But when you're in the right place, everything works for you. There is favor on every side. So now, Sam, Samson began to walk out of his covering. He was not in the secret place of the Most High. He wasn't under the direction of God. He was not being exposed by the enemy. That's number one. Number two, when he first killed the animal, it was okay. But there was no honey in there. So who hid the honey in there? The devil knew that Samson had an intercess, he had a covering. Samson had a parental covering in prayer. Samson's mother and father were consecrated in the place of prayer. They were commanded not to taste anything unclean. So as long as they ate nothing unclean, the mother's prayer covered Samson. But the moment the mother tasted of the honey, the, mother, the moment the mother tasted of the honey or from Samson and the father, the enemy was not able to penetrate the camp. So now from that moment, it was apparent that the protection over Samson was not there anymore. Samson was due to fall after that. Samson was due to fail because there was no intercessor anymore. The intercessor who was receiving instruction from God has now been affected and polluted by eating something unclean, something dead. And back in the days, if you touch anything dead, you are dead or you are unclean. He came back and the lion was still lying dead. That was a trap. That was a setup. To break every command by the angel. And every rule was broken. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to find out if anybody has a quick question uh, before we move on. Before we move on. Hallelujah. Any quick question? Any quick question before we move on? Hallelujah. Is there any quick question, everyone? Okay. All right. Good. So it means you, you understand. Hallelujah. My friend from London, do you understand? Pray, pray, praise God. Okay. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, we are seeing some certain things. So now when the Lord wants to really cause your seed to be a blessing, and the Lord wants to exalt you and lift you up, you must be careful of the seed within what you carry. Hallelujah. Consecration matters. A level of consecration. What is consecration? It's easy. It's just because our eyes are blind, so we are not able to see what is happening in the spirit. But spiritually, ideally, if you take your dishes, or you have your clothes, and you don't wash your clothes for one minute, it will begin to attract order, to have body odor. From then, you start attracting all kinds of insects. Sometimes you start attracting, of course, there will be death on it. If you don't wash your garments, that is how sometimes we are. We forget to wash and repent of our sins. We forget the blood of Jesus to be released upon us. And we begin to stink in the spirit. Our characters and our agitations become so, so strong that our flesh becomes so... carries so much order that anybody that comes around us is turned off by our flesh. That our flesh needs to be washed off. Some of us have not gotten spiritual shower in a long time. Some of us, the spiritual cloth that we have is so filthy. We've not washed. We are we clean physically. We don't like death at all. We want to wipe off everything. We want to wipe off everything. Anyway, there's death. There is this... Uh, but, have you checked your heart? When last, some of us will go to the dentist every six months. Some every three months. But have you ever checked the estrel of your heart? Have you ever removed those junks of those maggots or demons that has followed you because of your offenses? Have you cleansed the temple of your heart? Don't you know they will attract all kinds of spirits? You, you now have multiple personality because you, you, you refuse to let go. Listen to me. The more purer you are before God, the more you are able to see God. Blessed are those who are pure in heart, or they shall what? See God. Sometimes just shut down everything. Hear from nobody. Just you and God. Many of us sometimes will always love to go to facial. Facial cleanse. Why? So that we, our skin can look bright. Hallelujah. The Bible says faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. Some of us, we hear so much of humans. If, if it's, it's okay if you hear humans who are filled with faith. But if you can begin to hear words from humans who are filled with pollution. Very soon, like Isaiah said, I dwell in the midst of men of unclean lips. When you are among people of a clean lips, they can bring offenses into your life. Because Jesus says the words that I speak, they are spirits and their life. And so when you mingle with people who carry the spirit of death upon their mouth, upon their lips, what they say, the counsel they say, the words they say, it can affect your consecration. That is why it's very good to pull away but Jacob was so tired of the issues he was going through. His wife has died. She was he was feeling bad. He was feeling irritated. I wish I didn't say that she was going to die. I wish I didn't make that decree. Whoever took the charm will die. I made a decree and now my wife, unfortunately, had that charm on her. And she died. So Jacob was murmuring. He was feeling bad. He was... 
And he just said, you know what, enough is enough. You guys just go. Because his other wife was like, come on, Jacob, be happy. Come on, she's gone, she's gone. And Jacob is like, you're not even pretty. You even offended me. I shouldn't even be with you. It's because of you she died. Just, just You guys just go. And so there were so much family issues. Jacob just wanted a place of quietness. Jacob just wanted to calm his head. Have you been in that situation? Whereby your family, there's so much confusion? It's time to just remove the noise, the clutters. Or clutter yourself from that situation. Turn off the CNN with all those move with all those challenge and negativity, always interpreting the negative of somebody. Listen to me. Stay away from people who are very critical. It amazes me now. I'm sorry to say this, but if you don't come from Nigeria and you're seeing what is happening in Nigeria, you won't understand. There's so much revival happening now. Spirituality is taking over Islam in Nigeria. God is turning around the nation. Pastors are being feared now, reference, because so much Elijah's in that country rising up. And so, people who are so critical and jealous, who need salvation and who needs deliverance, instead of them to emulate the strength coming from a black man for the first time, they begin to talk about the weaknesses of another black man. The crab spirit. I don't know how we blacks will come out of that. If I look at any African nation and I see strength in them, I get very joyful. But you just start talking, it shocks me. 419, voodoo, this, that. And they emphasize the weaknesses of other nations. Whereas they should talk about the strength of other nations. That is why, unfortunately, the curse that was spoken by Noah is really affecting the black race. You see the Asians, you see the whites, you see how they celebrate each other, you see how they back up each other. They don't know each other, but once they see each other and they see the black, they know that the black is low. So no matter they fight for themselves to promote themselves, because they know that anyone that is there will help themselves. The blacks are not like that. They want to betray each other. We must get rid of that spirit, that Cain spirit. That Cain spirit, not an Abel spirit, the Cain spirit. Hallelujah. Be consecrated within you. Examine yourself thoroughly. Am I, do I like to criticize? If people were still alive, they would still be criticizing. If Moses was still alive, they would still be criticizing Moses. You know, the, you know the Israelites murmured against Moses? They don't even know why they murmured against him. His sister was talking about his wife. God was angry with that. They began to, why don't you do this? Why did you do this? And Moses was so angry at some point because he got tired. Because there was miracles, there was manna, God was pouring water out of the rock. But the people kept seeing the negative side of Moses. Can somebody say, Moses, thank you? I don't think it was even documented in the Bible for somebody to say, thank you, Moses, for what you are doing. If I mention Donald Trump now, I can tell how many people will leave the prayer line right now. I can tell how many people will just hang up the prayer line because they have been taught to focus on the negative of somebody. Even whether he prays or he calls the Holy Ghost, even if he's speaking tongues, their mind has been driven. I don't like that man. If you mention his name, I get up from the prayer line. No. No. You must celebrate the good in another whether you like it or not. If you don't do that, nobody will celebrate the good in you. If you go ahead and always intolerant against somebody's strength, you will, your strength will never be celebrated. It's the rule of law. You look at pastors, you are looking at their weaknesses because they have flamboyant cars, you want them to be poor, you begin to, you're looking at how they can lose respect. Why are they bowing down? Some, a, guy, a guy said to me, I sent him a video saying, man, uh, Nigerians, why, why are they standing up? Why will a preacher get close to them and they start standing up? He said, these Nigerians, why they, they like behaving like God? I said, is that what you're watching? You need healing. These guys have paid their price. Is that what you're watching? These young guys need a prophetic word. So they honor this man of God and they stand up. I said, don't get distracted by all this negativity. 
You can't change that. That is not even a sin. That's honor. So what is pricking you? If you have that agitation, and this man is saying he's a man of God. As a man of God. If you are angry towards that, people will not celebrate you. People will not honor you. If you sow that seed of discord, if you sow that seed of dishonor in your heart, it will happen to you. Say, so be careful. Whatever my man, you know, one time uh, in Guyana, South America, I remember this. And um, in the, I was with the bishop. And the bishop, um, something about him, hallelujah, something about the bishop. And this bishop is, uh, he, he shocked me. Um, praise God. This bishop shocked me. Um, we are about to go to the studio in the morning, 7 o'clock in, in the morning. And we're waiting for his wife. And he called his wife to where are you at? And the wife rushed down. You have one lady doing a necklace, another girl tying her shoes, another girl ah, putting on her wristwatch. I'm like, what is this? I mean, why are they serving her like she's a queen? And somebody said, it will, it will happen to you too. And so me, I kept quiet. I was like, I beg, please, I beg, please, please. This is worship, too much worship. In Texas, my spiritual son began to do the same thing. I go somewhere, he will drive the car, a front there, all kinds of crazy honor, which I don't understand. Now, it felt good initially. But then it began to increase my ego. I want to wear my shoe. It brings my shoe for me to wear it. I want to put on my suit. It brings my suit and put on my on my shoulder. I'm like, what is this? Now, it felt good to me. But then I was criticizing that. I didn't know that I was going to receive the same thing. Be careful what you criticize. Because what you see might be a blessing. I was in a I was in a conference one time and a man of God was testifying how the Lord blessed him. So a woman just gave him a credit card of fifty thousand dollars. And I said, I received that. My brother was like, What kind of nonsense? A man of God just taking people's money. In my mind, I said, I received that. And he looked at me and said, What are you talking about? You know, shockingly, two years later, I received such blessing too. Two thousand and nine. To 2011, I was given a credit card also of fifty thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars in it. Say use for the ministry. I will just load it up, and they will just load it up without my involvement. Because if I criticized that, I would have lost that. But because I received that, I celebrated that, I was now a partaker of that testimony. You get into a healing service. You don't need to be healed. You're not sick. You start criticizing those testimonies. What kind of testimony is that? What kind of... Why don't you just close your mouth? That bringing, bringing, a, bringing a curse on yourself. People are so quick to criticize. In criticism, there is death. It's not life. In criticism, we criticize each other so much. We criticize too much. And we need to repent from this filth that is going on in the body of Christ. A few days ago, I was just reflecting. And I said, wait, 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 wait. I have few men of God in my life I've not really celebrated. Or I have sown a lot of seeds to men of God who I honor. But the men of God who I was with in the beginning, I've not really sowed into the life. And I said, oh my goodness. I started writing them down. I said, Lord, next year, I'm beginning from this year, from today, I will begin to sow honor financially, begin to sow seed to every man. Who, whether they were nasty to me now, but they were good and in helping me or raising me up or drawing me closer to God. Or who gave me an opportunity to serve in the house of God. I said, Lord, it's my time. I'm going to sow a blessing to them and honor them. It's it, 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 because... When we sow, we might feel like, no big deal. I remember a woman who says, no big deal. God uses people to bless me, so I don't need to thank them. I say, oh my goodness. Because when is your time and you begin to help people? If you don't appreciate them now, people will not appreciate what you've done to them. The Bible says, give 
it shall be given to you. Pressed and shaken together shall men give unto you. If you honor men, if you so honor, men will so honor to you. If you so gratitude, appreciation, people will so gratitude to you. Hallelujah. This is one of the things, the lessons that I'm beginning to think and emphasize. I says, no, the time and the time has come. The time has come. But Psalm 24, he says something beautiful. Because I'm dealing with the topic called consecration before the end of this year. For you to receive serious blessings from God, God will always give you divine instructions. Remember this now. Many of us have blown our covenant with God. Even when you make vows before God, God will bring the blessings. Don't go about sharing the vow with anyone until you have paid your vow. Because if whoever you share it with, the devil hears the vow, he will make sure that you don't do the vow. When the devil saw, he saw the tree of life in the garden, he also saw the tree of good or evil and he also wondered why Adam and Eve did not touch the tree of good and evil he did not know why the tree of evil good and evil was there until he asked Eve has God commanded you not to eat of any of this tree because he saw Eve and Adam kept eating the fruits and kept eating vegetables but never tried that tree until that woman opened her mouth and he says, the day we shall eat, the God said we shall die. And the devil said, ah. So when he, she, he heard that, he began to disguise. He began to manipulate her. He began to walk on her mind. This tree is nice. This tree is beautiful. This tree is that. Till she tasted and tasted that tree. Never share the covenant you have with God. With anyone. Until you are fulfilled. The demands of the vow. Samson, the mother, the covenant was broken after they tasted the honey from the dead carcass. Whereas the angel says, don't eat anything or clean. But you realize that Samson broke the first rule by drinking. He was drunk, went down, and God was still with him. Why? Because the mother was repenting for Samson. Because God spoke to the mother and God also spoke to Samson. Tell your son not to eat anything ugly. No razor will be upon his head. But the moment the mother tried and tasted the, the thing that was there, because the mother did not know it was from a dead carcass. But the moment the mother tried it, from that day, something affected the mother's prayer life. You might be a mother here, listen to my son, listen to me. And your son can be so gifted. And you know your son is so gifted. But the drinking problem, the, the filth that you know has taken down many. I believe in the time of Samson, I believe his fathers were drinkers, were drunkards. I believe Manoah's fathers were drunkards. And God says, tell him not to touch anything. Or to drink any strong drink. I believe they were drink, they were just drinking and drinking. But God wanted a mother. That's why God says, Tell, do not taste anything, do not drink anything. Okay. Because the mother can be can be there for prayer. As long as the mother help, held up her consecration, she can pray for her seed to be preserved. But if her mother falls, the son will fall. That was the last time we heard about Samson's parents. Do you know that? After Samson went to Delilah, we didn't hear about Samson's mother anymore or father. Because Samson's wife, Delilah, made sure that her parents never came. I believe Samson's parents died because no record was spoken about them anymore. That was it. Once the devil brings pollution in your life, the enemy can introduce other things. They ate Cain and Abel. I'm sorry. Adam and Eve ate a forbidden fruit. 
and they produced Cain. Cain. Cain was Cain had a bad spirit and killed Abel. Began to kill. I don't know what seed you've eaten that is in your life. It can kill the dream that you carry. It can abort the dream that you carry. That seed. That seed. It takes consecration. Psalm 24, and then we go. Psalm 24. Psalm 24. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Some of us are wondering, what kind of consecration will I do? How, you know, one every great sign that you need to be washed. Every great sign that you need to know that, man, my car is dirty, I need to wash my car. Um, I need to do this, I need to cleanse the house. Um, I need to sanctify the house, I need to sweep the house. I need to wash the wall, I need to clean the kitchen, I need to clean the toilet. What is the number one sign? You begin to sense an odor in the house. You begin to see stains in the floor, in the bed sheets, in your house, in your clothes. You say, my God, it's time to go to the laundry. You don't need somebody to come tell you. You need to go wash your clothes. You need to go do this. No, no. You don't need somebody to tell you, oh, my mouth is smelling. Go, go, go and brush your teeth. No. You know you sense the smell. It feels different. Once you begin to feel different, you feel angry. Once you begin to feel offended. Once you begin to think of evil. They say, let this man be in you, which is Christ Jesus. They say, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Once you begin to lose the joy of God, every little thing offends you. Somebody say, thank you, you're angry. You snap. You try to sleep, you can't even sleep. It means it's time to go into a place of consecration. Can you imagine you walking around, your mouth is smelling? In the spirit, if your mouth is smelling, you start talking negative. You start talking like Isaiah. Everybody is turned off by what you're saying. Every little word you say is so offensive. Your words are not bringing peace anymore, not bringing healing anymore. That's when your mouth is smelling. Because your words will be so offensive. Your character will be so harsh because you need to visit the spiritual shower. You need to let the word of the Lord wash through you. Some of us, we need to go back and ask God, Lord, consecrate my attitude. One first level for you to know that you are consecrated now is that the love of God will begin to flow through you. The compassion of God will begin to flow through you. It's like you're at rest. You're not restless. If you are restless, if you are full of, you are, you are, if you are, if you say words, 500 words per minute, it means something is wrong. When you see people begin to talk, 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 uncontrollable, they talk, 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 you must pour, thoroughly purge yourself. First Timothy chapter one. Let's go there quickly. First Timothy. Oh my goodness! <laughs> wow, this this is too long. Now, remember, okay. First Timothy chapter one. First Timothy chapter two. Hallelujah. First Timothy chapter chapter two verse twenty. Oh, let me see. Okay, Second Timothy chapter two verse twenty. Hallelujah, and uh, um, um, yes. Okay, look at what it says. Hmm. Verse nineteen. I love what it says. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord nameth them that are his. Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Now, iniquity is the is the, is the ingredient that pollutes your soul. Habitual sin, addicted in a sin, addicted offense. But in a great house, they are not only vessels of gold or of silver, but of also of wood and of earth, some to honor and some to dishonor. If 
a man therefore purge himself from these if a man therefore cleanse himself from these he said what it shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified meaning you'll be a vessel honorable before angels you'll be a vessel that begins to attract the honor of men and the honor of god you say you say what a vessel unto honor sanctified meat for the master's use prepared for every good work flee youthful lust follow righteousness he said faith charity peace with them that call on the name of the lord out of a pure heart hallelujah so when you consecrate yourself he said what you begin to follow this fruit this fruit of the spirit becomes in you you remove all those carnality out of you then what by so doing you have not brought yourself to be a gold a vessel of good and of honor you become delightful before god you become favorable before god you become useful before god when you now decide to depart from iniquity when, because this iniquity is pollution is filth some of us are very clean physically if you look at your bed your mattress it's like you wash it every three days very clean but is your heart clean is your spirit clean do angels if they look at you can they say my god your mouth is so clean your teeth is so white your garments are white how white is your spiritual robe do you have so much offenses somebody offend you are you able to call them back or you wait for them to call you back or if they call you back do you pick up your phone immediately or you wait for three months before you pick up your phone is your heart tender is your heart hardened is your heart broken hallelujah if a man thoroughly purge himself from these thoroughly means thoroughly examine yourself your weakness thoroughly cleanse yourself meaning you can go and do have thanksgiving in your house invite everybody as guests they come eat partake and eat your cake and the dishes and you keep the dishes in the dishwasher and don't wash your dishes one month if you open that dishwasher you will see maggots everything will be stinking you can't even bear the smell that's how our attitudes are many attitudes are like that they have not been to the spiritual shower so their attitude is stinking you say one strong one word of correction they hang up the phone they can't even call you back are we like that we need to thoroughly purge ourselves from all these impurities. Cleanse ourselves from all this filth. So we can be honorable before God. Everybody wants to see a very clean car. Everybody is don't want to see a mold on your car. Once your car is very clean, shiny, well polished, everybody loves that. Your shoe, well polished. Your clothes, ironed out bright white spotless everybody want to be your friend nice perfume everybody want to be your friend but when you have body odor mouth odor <laughs> can you think about that spiritually you are trust spiritual man gods demons will be running away from you i mean angels will be running away from you because of the impurity and you say father in the name of jesus ah abomination father in the name of oh abomination why so much filth coming out you criticize criticize praise god if i continue like this it's going to go for a long time but we have to have a change of heart come to the place and examine yourself pour all your attitudes before god and say lord I'm different. Change me. Change me. Change me. I want to be more loving. I want to be full of compassion. I want to be caring. The Bible says we are purified by the word of the Lord. Take the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter 51. If you don't know what to say to the Lord, start with that. Many of us like to go to the spa. Many of us like to go 
for, for them to cleanse our toes and toenails and our nails and remove all the dead skins. That's good. You feel good when you come out, right? Many of us like to do the facial and get all the dead skin from our face. We feel so good. We feel bright. That's what you do in the spirit. Go into a fruit fast. Go into a vegetable fast. Cut off your phone for one week. Stay out of Facebook for three months. At least two weeks, one week. Stay away from voices, negative voices. Fast away from negative voices. And you just play the book of Psalms. Play scriptures. There are a lot of scriptures on the book in YouTube. Just play. Play it loud in your house. Listen to no CNN, no news for one week. Just build your spirit. Play some worship in the background. My goodness. Your life will never be the same. You see your life begin to go higher and higher and higher. By the time you are done, you'll, be, you'll begin to hear God. Because you will feel so good. Angels, your dream life will change. Why? Because angels will start coming to your dreams. Angels will start visiting your dream life. Because now you're not a vessel unto honor. You are now for the master's use. Angels will start revealing things to you in your dream. How you should pray. How you should minister. How you should be a voice. People will begin to enjoy you. The only reason why people don't know when to consecrate themselves is because they don't know when they stink. They don't know when the attitude is unbearable to other people. Hallelujah. We all get there. If you don't rest, if you don't rest enough, if you don't get enough sleep, you start getting irritated. Everybody will be annoying to you. No, all right? You know that. Praise God. Praise God. I don't know if it was a blessing to you uh, today. Hallelujah. If I continue, we'll keep on going. I bless God for this Christmas, even at the New Year. But before we go in there, please let's understand. Your consecration brings your answers very quickly and also brings the vision to pass. Are you blessed today? Brother, I bless you and keep you. Yes, amen. Have a blessed day. Amen. So, um, just, we're well, just holding a second before you go. I want to, I just a second before I have, you. I have a question. Yes. I have a question. I want you guys to pray for me. So I came on this morning. I'm uh, I'm in a city called Zion, Illinois. Okay. And I I came for a cancer, colon cancer evaluation. Okay. And uh, in Minnesota, they said that 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 it's there, but I came for a second opinion. So I'm getting ready to go out in a few minutes and go through a whole day of appointments so I just want you to keep me in your prayers mm, mm, because yeah it shall be well it shall be well it's going to be well when are you coming back to yeah. the city I don't know if I'm coming back tonight or tomorrow okay um, I just feel glad to come here okay all right so you know, I'm I just, I just felt glad to come here I'm glad you came and in the prayer when I got to my room yeah, when when I came to my room, when I checked in the night before last, it somebody wrote on the board outside my bedroom door, God is good all the time. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's what greeted me. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's not, there's not notes on all the other rooms. There's only one other room that has a note on it. So that was like a sign to me that I was on the right track. In Jesus' know, like name. Let's, let's, yeah. let's, let's, everybody, let's agree with her. Uh, hallelujah. Let's agree with her that the hand of the Lord will come upon her. Every root of cancer in her life will be wiped off by the fire of God. My father, wipe out in the name of Jesus. Wipe off every root of colon cancer in the life of your daughter by the power in the Holy Ghost. 
Zungrende rebe bia paranda rabahaya. Zekele bendele bia baradore bebios. Every root of colon cancer in the life of your daughter, let it be wiped out. Let it be blotted out by the power in the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. We're going to have a special... God bless, God bless you. We're going to have a special prayer by the, towards the end of the year. Hallelujah. Um, those who will be opportune to join us, is something you don't want to miss. It's going to be very, very um, life-changing. Some of you will go to your churches, but I will schedule the right time. We're going to have that prayer time. We are going to meet 5 a.m., but we're also going to meet at another time too. Um, hallelujah. So stay tuned. Tomorrow we're going to be meeting around 5 a.m. again. Any quick question before we go? Any other question before we go? Hallelujah. Amen. Are you going to be on tomorrow morning? We're going to be on, but uh, yeah, we're going to be on on the prayer line, and uh, we have somebody ministering. Hallelujah. Yes. Same time, uh, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock Eastern Time. 5 o'clock Minnesota. 5 o'clock Central Standard Time. Amen. It's, going to, it's going to be powerful. So, um, get, get yourself ready. Amen. Get yourself enrolled. Glory to God. Somebody say glory to God. Glory to God. Talk to the Lord and say, Lord, say, Lord, by your fire. Forge my soul. My brother, I don't know how you do it in London. You call all the way from London every day. God bless you. You're going to pray this prayer, everyone. Say, say this. You're in Germany right now. Okay, God bless you. God bless you. Say this loud and clear. Say this loud and clear before you go. Say this loud and clear. Say, my father, my father. By your blood, by your fire, purge me, purge me, wash me, say purge me. Hala bra sambra dere de via prodos. Zelebeka maradiri de via baradia. Hallelujah. Say by your fire, by your blood. My father, as I begin to pray, purge and cleanse me from every form of pollution. Cleanse me from every wrong attitude. Cleanse me, O God. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Ragazaba rababa rebebeka barandia. My father, my father, purge and cleanse me now. Drive a gabrada rababaya. Every form of carnality in my life. Lord, purge and cleanse me now. By your power, by your blood. Regede brada rababa. Shandi la brandi rebebia paradio. Zigede bia barandi rebebia. Regede rebebe 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 rebebia. Manga da rababa rebebia pa. Shale bandele be rebe bia paya. Mombre de rebe vege be rebe bia paradi. Zundora de rebe bia. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wash my vessel. Wash my vessel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, let's. Amen. God bless everyone for dialing in. Amen. You are loved. I pray the Lord will begin to lift you up. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout grace. Somebody say grace. Say Lord Jesus. I commit today unto your hands. Say I commit myself into my hands. Into your hands. You see, one of the most powerful prayers that every church always pray towards the end of the... Listen to me now. Oh, my goodness. You guys are making so much noise. It's not, it's not fair. It's not fair to other people on the prayer line. Try to mute your phone if you're going to be talking. Show respect. Hallelujah. This is the prayer you're going to pray. Paul prayed this special prayer. He says, 
and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit and the love of God. So let the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now forevermore. You're going to pray this prayer Lord, I pray. Say, my Father, today, let me experience the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I want to fellowship with you. Let me have the sweet fellowship of Jesus, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit, when you fellowship with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will put songs inside of your, your heart. The Holy Spirit will begin to replay the word of God that you've read all day. That is what we call fellowship. The Holy Spirit will begin to remind you of the promises of God, the prophecies declared over your life. Lord, as I pray, let me experience your sweet fellowship today. Oh God, all through today, let me experience the sweet fellowship of the Almighty. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Lord, let me experience the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit of God. Open your mouth and begin to pray. The sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Lord, let me experience the sweet fellowship of your presence. The sweet fellowship. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody said amen. Are you blessed? Hallelujah. Let's share the grace. And the grace of our love, Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, God bless you. Amen. God's goodness, mercy shall follow me all the days of our lives. We shall dwell in the house of God forever and ever. Amen. All of our peace be unto you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Bye bye. God bless you. God bless you.